Welcome back folks. Today we're out in the garage powder coating some buckshot. So I almost have three little batches here, but I'm just going to do them all together anyways. So first we have some that were tumbled for maybe only four hours. You can see they started to clean up, but they still have uh, some little hickeys and stuff hanging off on them. These over here went for 12 hours. They're a little bit better, more rounded definitely, but they still have those little tits hanging off there. But then these over here went for a full 24 hours and they're almost perfect. They still have a little bit of that left, but they're a whole lot better. But it doesn't matter because I'm going to just mix it all up together anyways. And that's the amount I'm going to be doing on our first batch here. This is real simple. All you need is a little toaster oven. Preheating at 400 and it's 20 minutes. That's the recipe for Eastwood. Speaking of Eastwood, we have the, uh, of course, Ford Light Blue. It works for everybody everywhere. So if you're just getting into powder coating, start with that one. And then you can venture off the path from there and get creative if you want to. And speaking of that, the Harbor Freight Black, this one doesn't really work for me at all. But if I mix it into one that does work, it'll give it some accents and look kind of cool. So we're going with the Ford Light Blue from Eastwood and the black there from Harbor Freight. And of course you need your number two or four or five or whatever plastic container to cause static and shake up your powder coat to bind onto your lead. And then you can bake it in the oven and that's how powder coating works. So I just have my uh, can I've already used several times and I've got this amount set up because I just want one layer. I don't want them piled up. Some people don't care, but I'm just doing one layer now, and then I can probably do two more trays and be done with it. So we'll just dump these in here. And that's the mixed up stuff here. I'll probably get to these tomorrow once they actually dry off completely. I don't wanna jump in and have moisture in them or any of that stuff. So we'll just knock these ones out today. You can see it's not a whole lot in there, but we'll add our powder coat, I'll shake it up, and we'll see what happens. So I've got this tray and this basket for sifting and then a piece of parchment paper to catch any powder coating that falls through. We can reuse that. And this doesn't really take a whole lot of material to be uh, effective. And actually the, the littlest amount you can get away with is better than having a whole bunch extra, which is why we actually kind of sift it off and get the uh, extra out of there. So out of this tablespoon I would say that's maybe a teaspoon so we'll do that much of the blue and probably that much of the black here oopsie yeah perfect just a little bit and that much will cover up all those pellets and then some we'll go ahead and cover these up get them closed back up rather because it's really humid out and that's what uh, essentially makes or breaks you for whether or not your powder coating is going to work. So the East Wind comes double bagged, you know, in case your bag falls off. She still has hers on and you can't see. <laughs> now we'll just put our lid on and shake vigorously for up to a minute. Okay, then we'll take a look. Oh, yeah, that's just perfect, even though you can't see. We'll see it right now. Okay. Yeah, that looks freaking perfect. I'm totally blocking all the light, aren't I? So that's exactly what you want. Now we're going to shake off any excess that we can, and then we'll put them on our tray with some parchment paper before into the oven they go. Let me stand over here so I'm not blocking all the lighting. That's perfect right there. You can see that it's a little darker than the Ford Blue would have been. Just some little black accents in there. So let's uh, get them on our pan here and into the oven. 
And I'm just using parchment paper. This is like the end of my roll, but you can reuse it, you know, several times. It's actually do one of these here. There we go. And then you can just simply pull the whole thing off and into your quench when you're done. And uh, you're good to go. There's a few piled up. It's not perfect, but it's still going to work. Once we drop them in the quench, most of them are going to separate, come apart pretty easily. So sometimes you can preheat your stuff on top of your oven and that'll kind of get the uh, internal temp of your bullets kind of up a little bit before you throw them in and that'll kind of let them heat up evenly, which will help everything cure at the same time. So they're just kind of chilling there for a minute and then we'll throw them in here. Okay, we'll reset for about 22 minutes so they'll start to cure for 20. And now we wait. But while we're waiting on this, we can get the rest of our buckshot coated and on a pan and up here heating and ready to go. So as soon as we're ready to pull those out and quench, that next one goes straight in with zero downtime. Go ahead and measure out another pan worth. Ooh, don't drop it. Yeah, that's about the amount we had. And you can see we still have residual powder from that and plenty here to reuse, so I'm not going to add any more, and we'll see what happens for our second tray here. See, look at all that. 100% reusable. Just don't let it sit out. If you came back after a day or two, it probably wouldn't adhere properly, so you might have issues with that. But if you're just reusing it again right now, you're good to go. And we have, we have some powder in there. Let's give it a, a spin and see what happens. Yep, just as good as the first batch. So it's kind of funny, you'll see how our first batch, it's gonna have a whole lot of blue in it and less black. And since more blue stuck to the first batch, our second batch here, it's gonna have even less blue and more black in it. And then our third batch after this, all that's left, not all, but a lot of what is left is that Harbor Freight black, because it doesn't stick as well on its own. So you kind of need to help it out with one that does work. So let's see if we can keep going and watch how they change colors and all that fun stuff too. We use another sheet of parchment paper. That just fits in there perfectly. There we go. So you can see they're still perfectly coated and this is going to be perfect. But then we see this, you can see a lot of the Black Harbor Freight powder left compared to very little amounts of the Eastwood Blue. So we'll recycle this and try around three. If we have to, we'll dump in a little bit more of the Ford Blue because we actually have the pan that came with the oven, so this one's a little bigger. We'll be able to finish the amount we have left with that. Oh yeah, that's plenty of room there, so we'll go ahead. Eh, my balls. Got him. Got him. All right, let's shake up this third one here 
and see if they actually coat or what color they come out as. And yeah, I think we're still working. Hopefully. Yeah, not too bad. Before we forget though, let's go ahead and place this one on top of the uh, little toaster oven to get them preheated and kind of warmed up so that it's easier to get them up to final temp once they go in for round two. So those are just resting up there on top. Obviously heat rises so they'll uh, be more easy to get up to temp once we throw them in there. And also if you're having troubles with them sticking, you can kind of preheat them before you powder coat and sometimes that'll help the powder adhere as well. So if it's like 20 or 30 degrees out in your garage one day and it's not working, try to preheat them and see if that helps at all. But don't get them too hot or as soon as you dump them into the powder, it'll just bind up and create a big ball of uh, paint. So that's not fun because it's basically ruined. So if you are going with the preheating before powder coating, just be aware of that. But we're gonna let these sit here for this next five to 10 minutes while these are cooking before it dings and we'll go get some water to quench these with real quick. So we got some cold water in a pitcher. These are still cooking. Now we need to put these on pan number three. Let's uh, get that paper lined back up. I didn't even shake them, ha! Huh? Okay, there we can see our final coating, and I guess we'll see how it actually works out. But as you see here, very little blue, and mostly the Harbor Freight black left over because it doesn't stick like the Ford blue. Oh, I lost one. He can go over here. And I'm totally done with this and totally done with this. We'll put our powders away, get cleaned up, wait for the timer. Go ahead and get those settled in and ready to go for round three whenever that is. Probably in the next, I don't know, 30 minutes because they take 20 minutes each. That one's got 10 left. You know, math. And here we've got our towel to dry it off with. There we go. So I like to put a towel over the cooking sheet or whatever I use so it'll catch them if they were to roll away. And then I can just pick the whole thing up and move if I need to as well. And we can go ahead and set these on top of that other basket that's already on the oven so it's not going to hurt them. We'll go ahead and throw those over there to get them out of the way. And then the next project, this is number four buck. 24 caliber apparently for coyotes and such nuisance like that potential home defense etc etc but just like the double lot buck you got to snip them apart so that's going to be uh, really tedious because to keep this mold up to temp because it's got so much more material I was doing two of these to every one of the double lot so I do a double lot and then number four, number four, double lot, number four. So I have twice as many of these to cut up and powder coat. And that should last me a really freaking long time because I don't actually have anything to shoot this at. Uh, unless anyone wants to go coyote hunting, that'd be sweet. Some of them kind of, you can, I don't know. This lead is pretty tough stuff. It was rain scrap plus linotype and then quenched already and then we're going to powder coat and quench again Ooh. yeah so this stuff's really hard which we're trying to achieve because we would like them to deform less upon firing which will help downrange accuracy and penetration and so on and so forth so you need hard cast water chilled and you can hear how they ting rather than clunk that's an indication of hardness. And I guess while we're talking about that, this one is approximately 20 BHN. <laughs> Sounds like a steel bar. Let me get a piece of pure lead. And then this one is a pure ingot. 
tink, tink, or clunk rather. One more time. Then somewhere in between that. Yeah. Anyways, we'll have to spend an entire day pretty much cutting this stuff up before we can powder coat it. So once we snip these apart, we still have to wet tumble all of those. And that could take a little while because I really like the uh, I really like the performance of the 24 hour tumbling. So that could take a lot of batches to do in the mini fart. I was only able to put maybe three to five pounds because instead of, you know, turning and tumbling, they would kind of slide up the wall and then back and slide up the wall and back. So it wasn't as much of a tumble as it was like a freaking slip and slide. So maybe I need to look into the Harbor Freight drum, which has a rubber lining, or I guess the whole drum is rubber rather. So we'll have to go with that eventually, but for now we can get away with it and it'll probably work faster and uh, more efficiently, but since we can get away with the mini fart, meh, we'll see how they work with that one. So we've got a few seconds left here. I'm gonna pull the third tray off so I can access the second one when I'm ready to do the swap. I have my nice uh, plank here, which serves for removing the trays from the oven. Get him out of the way. And he's not actually hot yet. Bingo! All right, I'm gonna reset the timer just to keep it up to temp. We're gonna pull that tray out and into the water, and then we'll add our second round. And those look just perfect. Into the quench we go. So you see they came right off of our parchment paper, no sticking at all. And we can probably get another use out of this, so I'm going to set it aside. Well, I'm going to set it on the floor so it cools off and uh, the cement leaches the heat out of it. But for now, we're done with this tray. Now it's time to add round two. In you go, and on to 20 minutes. Cut this one in, we'll throw round three on top to preheat. Rinse and repeat. All right, we've got our bucket here, and most of these came right apart on their own. I am pretty satisfied with that for my first round of buckshot. Obviously, these could have been tumbled a little bit longer to get some of those nipples out of there. But otherwise, I'm a happy camper. I'll just make sure none of them are stuck. Yeah, they just come right apart if they are. Let's see if we can agitate them in here. Perfect, here's the last four. This turned out amazing. I am uh, very much enthused about this, okay? Look at that. Tell you what, this will be plenty good for some nine pellet double lot, light recoil, you know, HD kind of stuff. Very satisfactory. I'm happy, so maybe, uh, in my opinion, you know, I'm excited about it. Maybe some of you more experienced buckshotters can give me some tips. Obviously, more tumbling will help that. So we're gonna try and do that uh, next time. If not, just go for the drum from Harbor Freight, because I heard some of you guys were doing, you know, almost 10 pounds worth of material at, the, at a time, and I was only able to do maybe three to five, depending on how my tumbler felt. We're going to get this back over here, and that's going to do it for today, folks. 
We were just out here in the garage powder coating our buckshot after work. Well, we had a couple hours of time. Got a couple more rounds to do, but it'll be the exact same as this, so no need to drag you along for all that. So thanks for hanging out. Stay tuned for some buckshot loads. Let me know what your favorite recipes are. We can probably try them all. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.